This is a talk about balanced relationships. All humans and all creatures are made equal. In the design of everything, everything needs to eat something in order to live. This species eats that one and then this other one eats something else. It's part of the grand design and in that design there's enough food and nourishment for every species to survive and thrive. But in that model, humans are rarely ever eaten by anything. So what does that point to as a responsibility that humans have in the balanced relations with the rest of the world? Well, long ago, when we lived a more indigenous, natural lifestyle, there were sacred agreements that humans had with plants and animals that fed them. And as long as these agreements were maintained, there was a kind of balance and harmony amongst all the creatures. Now, it's a bit of a stretch for some people to think that there were agreements between plants and humans. Humans talk, but surely plants don't. Or between plants and animals. How can people and animals converse? Well, I have a little story that begins to point to that. In 1997, I was sent to a uh, Ojibwa elder by the name of Carolyn to apprentice with her for a year. Carolyn in, was preparing four of us to go out on a vision quest where we would do uh, three days of complete fasting and maintain a fire in our own little spot in nature, far from the others. Anybody other? Anybody else? As part of the preparation, we were to gather cedar. And Carolyn had told us about how to gather cedar. We were to offer a pinch of tobacco to the cedar, introduce ourselves, and ask, may we please take some branches for our vision quest. We were to wait for a reply, and if we got an okay, then we would gather cedar. Now, this makes complete sense, because without permission, if we just take, well, we call that stealing, right? Made sense, but I didn't have any sense that I could do this. So we went out, the four of us, and we each chose a separate place to um, approach a cedar tree and do as we were instructed. I froze. It seemed like for an eternity. But at some point I looked around and I saw that the other three women were indeed gathering cedar, filling their bags. And I thought, well, they must have got permission. Well, how come I didn't get permission? And how, what do I need to do to get permission? And given it's me, I just don't know. But anyway, at some point I got the sense to look not for the words in an English language like we would speak to one another, but to get a feeling for what was Cedar's response. So I stood still, I asked, and I, my heart just like filled open. And I had this sense of a drawing toward the Cedar. It was such a friendly, tender, like a loving embrace. And I recognized that that was Cedar's way of saying, yes, come ahead. There were some standards agreements that plants and people had, and animals actually, I think, that first, that don't take more than you need, always make some kind of an exchange, like in this case, tobacco, and give thanks for the sacrifice that we're making on your behalf. Well, that makes complete sense to me. 
Well, we don't harvest in the wild any longer, uh, hardly ever, most of us. And uh, around 2,000 years ago, we began to cultivate certain plant species. Well, nowadays, we mostly don't grow our own food either. And when it comes to animals, there were special agreements that we made with the animals. And the, it was a bigger sacrifice for an animal to make to feed us. So in some cases, there would be um, a fast. The hunter would need to do a fast for perhaps 24 hours, or the family would, or the tribe would. So there was sacred fires lit. There were offerings made, prayers, gratitude to the animal for its food, for its life. Uh, sometimes paintings made to honor the, the deer or whatever animal was being honored. Well, we no longer harvest from the wild and make our offerings and prayers. We no longer do our planting ceremonies for the most part. We hunt and gather in grocery stores. Our food is already cleaned cut, packaged, bunched, arranged, organized, displayed. We, know we don't need to check the weather to see if it's an acceptable day to go gather. We don't need to get out of our business attire. We don't need to get our fingernails dirty. And we certainly don't fast or make offerings. So... How do we return to living in balance with nature? Well, the very basic, basic level is gratitude. Any gift given, the basic exchange is thank you, a sincere thank you. So before you eat your meal, perhaps even in the grocery stores, could you take time, picture this plant and animal or these various plants and this animal that is represented in our meal, picture them in the wild. Picture them alive. Get a sense of the the gift that it is and the belongingness that they have, the right to life as we do. Give sincere thanks and then enjoy your meal. I believe this is a way to make a modest exchange, a way to begin to get a sense of the equality of all things, the interconnectedness uh, and interdependence of all things and a way to begin to feel the love and generosity and belongingness, the joy in our hearts. So please join me in these simple ways of giving sincere thanks. <laughs>